I really truly can. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our show tonight. It's Thursday, the 26th of March. I'm Kath. The hand that you might see over there is Hannah. Wave your hand, Hannah. Can you see? Oh, there's the fingers. Yeah. That's Hannah. And we're here to talk, talk about making do in the kitchen and scones. Now, we still don't have a working oven. Probably nothing much has changed in here that you can see. I've started to empty some cupboards, but otherwise things have ground to a halt for obvious reasons. But um, I'm using the pie maker, and I have to say that it's one of those gadgets that I wasn't sure about. And it was only $15, so I really thought if I didn't like it, if it was really bad, I didn't want to use it anymore. $15 wasn't such a big loss. It's more than paid for itself. Oh, yeah. More than paid for itself. But tonight we're going to try scones in it because I've not done scones in the pie maker before. So we're going to try scones. So we're starting from scratch. You're here to see me make the dough and put them in. So you'll be witness to the magnificence or the flop you know it's either going to be a great success or a dismal flop and I'm going to do some plain and then I'm going to do some hot cross scones because I can't do hot cross buns because I haven't got the oven to do the buns I can do hot cross loaf I can't do anything else so let's get started this is just my basic scone dough that I'm going to use. It's three cups of self-raising flour. Where's my trusty cup measure? About 300 mils of cream, which is a cup and a bit. Oh, perfect. There we go. So I've got another 50 mils of cream. I eyeball it, folks, for this bit because seriously, 50 mils isn't much, but yep, two tablespoons thereabouts, that'll do. And lemonade. Now, the original recipe calls for one can of lemonade, which is 375. about 375 mils. That makes a really sticky dough, and I find I have to add more flour to it. Hannah found these cute little cans. Remember these? These were around when I was a kid. Minis. And this was, actually, she found them, but it was the only lemonade she could find. Um, and these are 200 mils, so we're going to try it with 200 mils. I might need to add a bit more cream, but we'll see. And the cream I'm using, that's um, some leftover thickened cream. The cream from the jar was last week or the week before NQR had um, big bottles of cooking cream, five litres for $5. So I jarred it up and froze it when we got home and we've been working our way through that because it's great for quiches and stuff mm -hmm. and scones, we hope. So this is going to make a really fluffy dough, I think. Might need a bit more flour. Well, maybe not. It's not coming together very well. So let's see how we go with the stirring. All right. So... How are you all surviving? Are you all remembering to stay home? No, because I've got to go to work. Oh, you've got to go to work. If you've got to go to work, you've got to go to work. But if not, just stay home, can't you? Now, if you don't have lemonade, you can use soda water. Tonic water too? No, not tonic water because it will taste. Okay. Tonic water has a distinct taste. I need mean, something that's... Um, <laughs> the quinine in the tonic water that gives it the, the distinct taste. So don't use tonic, but soda water's fine. Or you can just do what the CWA ladies do and just double the cream. Easy peasy. Now, that's it mixed up. I've already put the pie warmer on to heat up. So I'll tip this out onto the mat in a minute and we'll pat it down. I just want oh, burnies. I've lined it with some baking paper. Hot. 
because I would put baking paper on my tray and I think I'm going to need help getting it out. Now, we're doing them in this, and this is the family size pie maker because that's where I wanted it to go. Um, we're going to try and do five at once. As you'd make them in a round cake tin, you don't have to put your hand up. Can you, just you say, use long life cream? You could use long life cream. I've used long life cream when we've been away. Um, as long as you've got enough to um, moisten the dough and bind the flour and work it together, it's fine. I like this recipe because I love the scones with the butter and, you know, mixing it in and whatever. But I really, really, really don't like the mixing it in bit. My hands don't work so well like that anymore. So let's put this spoon over here, plug it out. Oh, there we go. Now, I was always taught with scones that you have to be gentle because you don't want to push the air out of them because the lemonade has put air into it. So you pat it down, not roll it, pat it to about the thickness you want. Sure you've got about an inch. Is that about right? Yeah. Maybe an inch, an inch, and three quarters of an inch or thereabouts. Get your trusty glass. I put the lid back on the flour canister too soon. Dip it in the flour or your scone cutter and go. Poof. Poof. Oh, one way. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm going to be covered in flour. Like that. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this has been on for a while and it is hot. So let's see how we go. I've no idea how long they're going to take to cook. I would imagine the same, about 20 minutes, same as if they were in the oven. There we go, we might get five in there. Yep. Now, I'm thinking... When I do scones on the tray, I have them touching because it helps with the rise. If they're just touching, it helps them rise. So I've got them just touching in there. Should we try one in the middle? No. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Had to ask. A little bit of milk on top. Will the pie, yeah, will the pie maker recipes be posted in separate files on the website? Um, We're going to have to start something, aren't you? We know? might have to start a pie maker file. I think there already is one, actually, if I remember. Okay, lid down. Now we just wait. Now we just wait. Timer on. Now we just wait. So they were plain. This next a lot, I'm just going to change up a little bit. Cassie would like to know where's your apron. Hanging on the hook over there behind the door. I've got three new aprons cut out. I just haven't had the time to get the sewing machine out. I didn't get the hankies made. I didn't get any of them. I know. Still all right. Okay. Now, I wanted to make these hot cross. What did I say? Hot cross scones. So here's what I'm going to do. Don't know, I don't know how this is going to work, folks. This is an experiment. Need a bit of mixed spice. Kind of oh, like spice. spice. Yeah, I like spice. Okay. And we'll just gently roll it through. And hopefully it should be like a um, scroll. Oh, it smells nice. I love the smell of some spice. Okay, so we'll push it down. Oh, no, still being, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it because I'm, I'm always nervous because you don't want tough scones. So the spice is going through. Perfect. That's what we want it to do. Slowly going through the batter, the dough. All right. Push, put that out. Yep, bless you. Got the hiccups. Okay. So here we go. These can be the next lot. 
We're doing fruitless. Fruitless hot cross ones. I'll make fruit ones in a minute. Okay. Thank you. Give me a chance. She's bossy, isn't she? Gosh. Gee, they smell really good. Okay. Need one more. Yes. I'm working on it. Got plenty of time. <laughs> She's being bossy tonight. So how many of you are working from home now? Hmm? I don't I don't see the problem with working from home. Don't know why? I've been doing it for years. Oh, okay. How you're managing with the kids home from school early for holidays. I don't have any kids. Don't have any kids anymore, so we don't have to worry about it. Not little kids anyway. I know we've got some teachers as members, so I've been thinking of them. Yeah, we'll do that. That'll do. All right. Okay, so what do we got? Um, sorry, I've got to lean over to read. Um, Kathy's still at work, kids are at home. Okay, everyone's still at work. No, no rest for the wicked. You must be an essential service if you're still working. Just think, the world cannot operate without you. You are essential. Mm -hmm. Sorry. All right. Now, making do. I'm making scones as a part of the make do because if you run out of bed, bread, bed, if you run out of bed, you're going to hit the door. If you run out of bread and you don't have yeast or you're not a bread maker, what are you going to do? Make scones. Scones are easy. We've just shown you. Um, there's been no shortage that I've been able to find on cream at any of the supermarkets. I've never been not been able to get it. Lemonade is back in stock. Yes, hand up again. Lorraine, Kath, are you going to make scrolls? Scrolls. Well, Hannah said scrolls the other night, didn't you? I did because I want some. She wants scrolls. We can do scrolls. We can try scrolls in the pie maker and see how they go. Do you have cinnamon in the cupboard? Cinnamon in the cupboard, yep. Yeah. And cinnamon. Sorry, folks. Hide behind the area. Oh, right there. Perfect. You're a punk. You might need to go fill that up for me. Okay. Um, and the brown sugar. Brown sugar. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm really tempted to lift the lid and peek. And they say, say you shouldn't, but I really, really want to. So here goes. Look right to me. What was that? Don't do it without me. Peak. Yeah. Too late. <laughs> You're right. Okay. Found it. All right. So, um. Carol, I hope you get better soon. Um, it's gone hard, hasn't it? I need to put some apple in it. If your brown sugar goes hard, you can put a slice of bread in it and leave it overnight. You can put um, a sliced up apple in it and leave Ooh. it overnight. Don't leave it any longer because it goes all irky. And the bread will go mouldy. Um, or you can just keep it in the fridge if you have room. I don't have room in the fridge to keep anything else in it. So, but if you keep brown sugar in the fridge, it doesn't go hard either. So, okay, flossy pot. Let's put cinnamon on the next shopping list. Next spice shopping list. Okay. Thank you. So, now, comments. Uh, all right. 
I want to make cinnamon squirrels. Yep. Thank you, Diana. Okay, so cinnamon scrolls, scrolls it is. Folks, we've got a few cheapskates on the sick list at the moment, so if you think of them in your prayers, just let, you know, give them a bit of a boost. We also have a member stuck on one of the cruise ships off Western Australia at the moment, which has turned into a bit of a schmozzle, hasn't it? So you keep her in your thoughts. That would be good that she gets home safe. She's got to come home to Melbourne. That's why I like staying on land. <laughs> you fly. Yeah, but that's just quick. Well, you've got to land somewhere when you fly. They've got to let you land. Yeah, it's land. Yeah. So, all right, we'll get this next batch of... Because um, you could have that like, half scones, half cinnamon scones. I could. Is that what you're going to do? No. Oh. All right, next lot. Uh, my half a cup measure because I've just used... But I can do just a half recipe because I want to make fruit into one. Yeah, but you just take it out while it's playing first for the cinnamon scrolls, then leave it. Or are you going to put the dry ingredients yes, with us? Yes, darling. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll do flour. Joel make want to make cinnamon scrolls now. Um, Glennis is here. Uh, Diana says they're looking good. I can't um, confirm that or not. I haven't seen them. <laughs> oh, looking good. Yeah, guess what? We got freshly made strawberry jam. That's all right. I can take it to lunch tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Helen, this is her first live. Welcome. I hope you enjoy it. Gosh. Right. Cream jar. That's probably enough for it. Oh, well, you know what? Chuck it all in. That's exactly right. We'll go by feel. You don't forget the fruit too. I won't forget the fruit too. Let's break out the jar. Some fruit again. I'm eyeballing it. I'm actually not even going to eyeball it. Okay, that's enough. So, I could have had a right, let's make the dough. These will be for the fruit scones, lemonade. Yeah, oh, have I forgotten? I just don't want to use it all. Or you could just use extra cream. Or the... extra cream. Yeah. Alrighty. Finally gave in, folks, and pulled the tomatoes out. It was heartbreaking because they were still flowering and still forming fruit. But I needed the garden for the winter veg because I'm thinking we'll need some this year. The price of fruit and veg has just gone ridiculously ballistic. What were you thinking? Turn that into scraps too. You could. Cream and cheese, I think. Mm. Should have thought of that before I did this. Right. Oh, well. Okay. Mm. That's that lot done. We'll roll that out in a minute. 
Leanne would like to know what should we be planting? Depends where you live. Now, if you're in the southern part of Australia, so we're in Melbourne, we're doing, I can tell you I've got um, silver beet, um, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbages, lettuce, Some parsnips, more. turnips. Got to think at the moment. Um, any of your leafy greens, lettuce, believe it or not, lettuce is actually more a winter crop than a summer one. I know we grow it, plant it in spring for summer because we tend to eat it with our salads and stuff, but it likes the cooler weather. So lettuce will grow all year round in Victoria or in Melbourne anyway, but check your zone. Um, if you're in the northern part of Australia, you're going to be planting what I would have been planting um, you're almost reversed because of the, the wet season. So you'll be planting things like um, doing the tomatoes and the celery and that sort of thing, capsicums, zucchinis, cucumbers, all those sorts of things you'll be doing. I almost just do that as a big one. Oh, do you want to try this big one? Take a long time to cook yeah. that. Yeah. Um, You'll be, if you're in the northern and the tropics, you'll be doing those sorts of things now, whereas I'm doing what we call winter veg. So it be interesting to see um, how much more the prices go up. Because everything's, I saw celery for $6 a bunch the other day. Broccoli was $15.99 a kilo. Um, oh, just outrageous. I think capsicums were $9.99 for green ones and red ones were $15 or $16 a kilo. It was just ridiculous. So I know it's because of the bushfires, then the floods and the drought, and now we've got um, everyone on lockdown. But if you're a family that's used to eating veg, that's going to have a big impact on your grocery budget. So if you can grow even a little of what you eat and save some money, it's not going to hurt. Even if you pay full price for your seeds, um, it won't. You'll still save money. Yeah, did you all see my thing the other day? I put on Cheapskates Chatter about um, choosing knowing good seeds sinkers versus floaters. If you want to test your seeds, put them in a, well, I use a little rice bowl like this um, with water in it. Sprinkle your seeds in before you go to bed. When you get up in the morning, any that are floating, skim off because they're not going to germinate. Then strain it and what's left will germinate and because they've already been soaked, they should germinate a little bit faster for you. I want to see how much time's left. Oh, it's nearly up. Nearly up. Give me a look. Oh, they are good. Oh, good. And they sound good too. Mm. They sound hollow. I tap my scones like I tap the loaf of bread. If it sounds hollow, I'm pretty happy with it and I know it's pretty much done. So we'll see. I'm just going to wash my hands and get out a cake cooler. And I will be right back. Don't think I've ever washed my hands as often as I have the last three or four weeks. They're certainly clean. But they're certainly letting me know they clean too because they're quite dry and rough. If you run out of hand cream, coconut oil, olive oil, even vegetable oil, rub it in before you go to bed. If you're worried about getting oily bits on your sheets, put your hands in some socks. Um, socks wash and it's easier to wash socks than it is to change the bed. But they will that will um, keep your hands moist anyway. 
All right, so clearly, clearly don't recognize the hollow sound. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Kath should be on the description list. <laughs> uh, I have to go for an injection into my. Oh. Oh, well, I'm glad I'm taking your worry away, Barbara, and I know how it's you funny. feel, Judy. I've had those injections. All right. Hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Can you see the steam coming off them? Yes. And yeah. they are done. That's my there life tomorrow. Done perfectly. Let's try some fruit ones and see how we go. I have visions of me being up to midnight now cooking all these scones. It didn't take long at all. 20 minutes. Not bad. Okay. Ouch. We'll warn you, this thing does get mighty hot. Now, the only thing I haven't done with this, and I have wondered about it, is check the electrical. The amount of power it draws. Did you need to put milk on those? I could have put milk on them. There we go. Let's put milk on them. Just makes them a little bit. There we go. Um, how much power it draws and whether it's, look, for us at the moment, it's a godsend. But once we have the ovens going again, if we just wanted to make one quiche, what I need to know is, is it, cheaper to run this for the half an hour than it is to run the oven. The summer appliances, especially ones that heat and cool, suck a lot of um, energy. So suck a lot of power. So I need to know. Um, right. Scrolls. You just slide that down and I'll we'll turn this around. I can't wait till we have a our new kitchen bench is going to be almost twice as big. I'll have room, folks, I'll have room. It's so exciting. Okay. One. This is for the scrolls, folks. Okay. Just going to do cinnamon scrolls. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Doing. Everyone says you need oh. your apron on because you're getting flowers. I know, I'm covered in it, aren't I? I've picked it out. Thank um, you very much. Right. Um, one and a half. 300, 150. Okay, there we go. Yeah. And about the same as lemonade. Perfect. Let's see how we go. Right, so, hello, Maureen. Did you find your seeds that you're after on Tuesday? That's for Maureen, by the way. Not yet. Not yet? Okay. I'm going to have to juggle a bit here, folks. Sorry. We'll move this. And we can put the lid over here. Turn those around and I'll have to use the bench to do the scrolls. Oh, no, I won't. I've got the scrolls up here. Here we go. 
this. See how they go. They smell nice when they're cooking. Are these recipes in the file? Uh, the scone recipe is. The plain scone recipe definitely is. I'm winging it with the others. I'll write them up tonight and put them in the um, recipe file. They'll be in the um, bread folder. So. They'll be in the bread folder. Oh, I need the rolling pin if we're going to do this rolls. Sorry. You will be. I've had the um, the crock pot still going behind me. It's got pears in it to make pear butter. The dehydrator has been going flat chat for two weeks, doing tomatoes and spring onions and carrots. <sighs> I'll show you. That jar, which is about two cup jar, I think, and that little Tupperware bowl of carrots, and that was my dehydrator. Full. Oh, that's how much they shrink down. So, really good. Good for saving room in the freezer and the pantry. This might need it to be a bit wetter, perhaps. Oh no, maybe not. Oh, that's all right. Thought it was going to be too, too dry. That's okay. All right, scrolls you roll. Get your rolling pin. Use pear butter like jam. Um, like apple butter. So I put the pears in the. I peel them and core them and just slice them in quarters and put them in the crock pot and let them cook down till they're really, really soft. Then I, um, I don't think this is going to work so well for me tonight. Then I put the, put the stop. She's whispering in my ear and I can't hear the two things at once. <laughs> then I put the stick blender through it to make it a, um, a puree, put it back in the crock pot and I let it cook overnight. It will thicken up and darken overnight. Now, I don't add anything to it. If you look at the recipes online on Taste or Best Recipes or anywhere like that, they add spices and sugar and stuff well i think pears are pretty sweet on their own so i have never added sugar to anything i've made with pears um and i just like it plain so that i can use it then for other things so i don't put anything in it at all i just let it cook down and it becomes quite dark um golden brown almost and thick nice and thick so that when you put the spoon in it and tip it upside down, it doesn't pour off. It sort of goes blah, if that makes sense. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? But it just goes, you know, it, it hangs for a set, like tomato paste, about that consistency. Really nice on bread, really nice on bread. But it can be used in place of oil in cakes and muffins so if you're doing a banana loaf or a zucchini chocolate zucchini loaf or muffins something like that you don't want to use the oil or the butter replace replace it with the pear butter or the apple or apple butter will do the same thing um julie and rob said they've been dehydrating carrots potatoes celery onions zucchini and mushrooms plus some peas and corns and vacuum seal them in mason jars very good. I made up some um, veggie packs last week. On the weekend. At the weekend with celery and carrot onion. and onion in them and measured them out so that I can use them for soups or casseroles or pasta sauces. 
or whatever. It's going to melt some butter to spread on these scrolls, folks. Give me half a tick. Cover that now. Clean my quave. All right. Mm -hmm. They might take a bit, the fruit ones might take a bit longer to cook because they've got fruit in them. I knew that would happen. Don't, don't. Stop making a mess in my microwave. Lauren said she tried the onion trick you suggested, hanging them in the stockings. Harvey thinks she's gone mad. When you've got onions in the middle of winter, he'll be grateful. I can't say anything else. If you told him it came from me, he'll be sure you've gone mad. <laughs> it was my idea. Gosh. All right. Okay, butter. When you're making scrolls, folks, be generous with the butter. Don't be mingy. It gives it flavour. Now, I didn't actually use butter. Mm. I used butter spread, but all the spreadable butter. But you know what I mean. Carol's been making pear and ginger chutney. <gasps> Ooh, yum. Yeah. Two things we love, pears and ginger. And chutney, three things. Ooh, is there a recipe for that, Carol? Um, brown sugar. Get another fork. Dig out the brown sugar. And I shall mix it with some cinnamon. I shouldn't need another bowl. I'm going through a lot of dishes tonight. You yeah, are, what is it? I'm just going to have to spend a lot of time washing up. Yes, Thomas will. <laughs> mean cinnamon all right where'd that piece go mm, another one yeah okay she said there is we'll post tomorrow oh thank you thank you thank you so i did um with all the tomatoes we had i thought it's over past the sauce so I ended up drying a whole heap and grinding them down to a powder, which was Carol's trick from last summer. So I um, very happily did that. It so and it good. smells so good, yeah. And it's and you know, and you don't need a lot to give a great whack of flavour. Now you're not going to be able to see that. So let's move this. Okay. Now, these are going to be the dodgiest scrolls this side of Baker's Delight. We'll still Can them. you just hold that for me? There we go. Thank you. Oh, cool. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay. Thank you, my darling heart. You're welcome. Now, close the ends off because I don't like the bits to fall out. Chop it off. Kids eat those. All right. Now I'm thinking probably three because they don't have a lot of height. Um, we'll see anyway, won't we, how they work. Smell the cinnamon. Smell the cinnamon, yeah. Not much. Almost there. Won't be long. All right, let me get rid of some of this stuff. <coughs> it's going to overcrowd me and I'll go insane. Get me out of here. Get out of here. Okay. Mm. Diana said they are probably better than Baker's Delight. It's true, they are. 
They are. And mm -hmm. cheaper. And way cheaper. Way, way cheaper. Excuse me. But really nice um, cheese and Vegemite, which is, you know, everybody's favourite, I think, if they can't have coffee, cheese and Vegemite, or cheese and um, spring onion, or roll your pastry out, roll your dough out, mix a tub of cream cheese, cream cheese, with a half a packet of French onion soup, spread that over them, sprinkle just a little, even a little tiny bit of grated cheese, tasty or mozzarella or whatever you've got over it, roll that up and cook it, yum. They are so good. Sun-dried tomato is really good in them. So all sorts of things you can put in scrolls. You're limited by your imagination. Watch your mix. Focaccia mix in scrolls. Yeah. Oh, you mean it? Our focaccia filling. Yeah. I was thinking focaccia mix as well. Um, I make. We call it focaccia mix. I make um, eggplant, zucchini, tomato, onions, garlic, capsicum. mushrooms, capsicum. Yep. Yep. And I dice all the veggies up, put them in a pan with um, a good slurp of olive oil. Turn it on, stir it round, stir it, stir it, stir it, and I just turn it on low and let it cook until it becomes almost um, a paste. The veggies cook down and they sort of all mush in together. And you it does go. You don't need teeth to eat it. No, you don't need teeth to eat it. It, it sort of goes that, hmm, because it's got the mushroom and the eggplant in it, it sort of goes that brownie colour. But oh my gosh, it tastes great. And we have that. Um, I'll get the focaccias, cut them in half, spread them with that, sprinkle of cheese, pop them under the grill or in the sandwich press. They're really good. Really, really good. Get my hands again. That freezes really well. Um, so I can do a big crock pot full of it and I portion it out into, I use, Soup ladle, it's my standard measure, is my trusty soup ladle. One soup ladle full into a bag, and that's enough for three or four focaccias. Um, it freezes. I did look into canning it, as in pressure canning it, but it's too thick. It doesn't have enough moisture in it, and there's not enough acid in it mm -hmm. to safely can it. So... We freeze it, and that's all right. We we survive with the freezing. Does well. Does well. Now this is cool. You're not going to be able to see this, but oh my gosh! There we go. Perfect. Perfect scone. Does it look right? Mm -hmm. Perfect scone. Oh, it's got a nice crumb to it. Got one bristle off the um, pastry brush. Won't charge you for that. There Good. you go. All right. These ones must be about ready to go, Jean. And we'll see how they go. I can't, can't stop looking. Oh. Hot, hot, hot. Okay. There goes Wayne's pager. It's Thursday. Okay. You can see him dash out the door in a minute, but it's Thursday, so he's not on call. Now, ow. You Try my clean tea towel I got out of tea, so. Can you hear that sound? Sounds like a horse galloping. <laughs> well, that means they're cooked. They're sort of sounding a bit hollowy. <sighs> Yep. So they're cooked. All right. So that did five in 20 minutes. So it's not, look, for not having an oven, it's perfect. If you were living in a caravan, it would be fine, you know. I wouldn't like to cook like this all the time. Now let's try the scrolls. Okay. Scroll one. Scroll two. 
three. Might need to leave a bit of space between them. No, it's fine. It's fine. I'm just cut it in the up. middle. Just cut it up, you reckon? She yeah. says just cut it up. That's right. Just there, so just cut it up. There we go. Yeah. All right. They'll probably take about the same amount of time. Oops. I think I've broken my timer. So we'll see how they turn out. Now, these all have to be cooked, don't they? All right. So, okay. Night, Barb. Um, do the scrolls. Expand much. Usually in the oven, I don't know. We've never done scrolls in, in the pie maker before, Estelle, so I don't know. As I said before, you're learning with me. Um, in the oven they do. They sort of go, they don't go higher, they spread. Um, uh, okay, so there we go. What a mess. What a mess. Hmm. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Cool enough to cut, do you think? Do they smell really nice? Oh, look at that, my ugly one. Oh, yeah. See? Perfect. Breakfast. Oh, my gosh. Toast them. Toast them in the morning. Yum. Be like toasted English muffins with fruit. I don't know if they still make English muffins with fruit. They used to. Mm -hmm. oh, they were good. Good, good, good. All righty. So there we go. We've got scones and we've got scrolls. That's something else you can make without if you don't have bread and all you need is flour. Um, if you're making, if you're going to do the lemonade recipe, it's for sweet things because lemonade's sweet, obviously. So if you want to do it with savoury things, either double the cream, use soda water. Or use soda water, yeah, to um, so that you, so I don't know how cheese and Vegemite scrolls would go with the sweetness of the lemonade. Probably not good. So just try that. But three cups of flour and 600 mils of cream is pretty easy to remember. You might need to add a bit more flour. Flour is funny. It depends on the humidity, the time of year, the humidity, the age of the flour as to how much liquid it actually takes to um, form a dough. It's, it's an odd thing, but how, it keeps for a long time. So, How are you going to make them um, into a hot cross bun? Hmm? Cream cheese icing on top. Oh, I was just going to, for the hot cross scones, I was just going to... Do a damper cross in them and hope it rose up. <laughs> I was thinking about that because normally with the hot cross buns, I make the dough with and put it in the piping bag and pipe it over them before they're baked. But I don't think that would work with these. And I didn't really have time to try it. So I thought hmm, I was just going to mark them like I do for damper, which is another make do thing you can do damper and you can do damper is just flour and beer 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 damper or you can use milk or you can use water flour and water for your um damper and all you do is make the dough shape it into the loaf put it into a hot oven and let it bake if you're camping you put it into a hot camp oven if you're at home you put it into a hot cake tin and put it in the oven Damper's really good. Damper's great um, for slicing the next day and toasting is really good. If you don't have bread, you can do cornbread. And cornbread is nothing really like bread. It's um, plain flour and cornmeal or polenta, some baking powder. A lot of the recipes will have sugar in it. I don't put sugar in the cornbread. It's, it's sweet enough. It, you don't need the sugar in it. And to me, when I do cornbread, we're usually having it with soup or chilli 
and to have the sweet bread with the chilli or the soup is just bizarre, just wrong for, for our taste. So I always leave the sugar out, but I do put the salt in that. And I don't normally put salt in the recipes, but I do put salt in the cornbread recipe. So I want to have a peek. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh come on. They're looking, they look all right. So I do do that. So that's another thing that you can use. Um, if you don't have bread and it's easy enough to make you make it up it's about the consistency of a thick pancake batter pour it into a buttered or oiled casserole dish and bake it it gets a really lovely crust on the outside the top's golden the inside's fluffy like a scone and it's really good warm it's really good cold the next day buttered slice it thin and toast it so much you can do with cornbread and if you have stale cornbread it's never happened in our house i've always had to put some away deliberately but if you do get stale cornbread you can crumble it um to not not as fine as bread crumbs but crumble it and use it as a topping on a, a mornay or a, a casserole and it's really nice like that too so you're not wasting it doesn't go to waste I can listen to this thing creaking and creaking. Um, it's cooking. Yeah. We should have smell a vision. It would be, it smells really, really good. It smells really good. It's a wonder the boys aren't all hanging around sniffing. To see what's cooking. Oh gosh, I am in a mess, aren't I? No. It's only flour. It'll come off. Mm -hmm. Good stiff breeze. It'll come off. Um, so, all righty. Now, guys, um, while we're waiting, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Um, those two things really help our rankings on YouTube which makes it easier for you to find us, it makes it easier for newcomers to find us. And the other thing is if you know someone that you think would benefit from knowing how to make scones in the pie maker or scrolls in the pie maker or hot cross scones, please feel free to share the video, share the link with them so that they can get the recipe too if they want to. The other thing is... We were talking the other day and we've decided that we're going to extend the March sale for as long as we need to um, while people are struggling with the face of sudden unemployment or reduced hours while they're stuck at home with nothing to do. We'll keep the membership sale going as long as we can so that everyone has the opportunity to at least get on the forum, even if you don't want to read the journals or the tips or anything, get on the forum and start talking to other people who are so full of great ideas that, you know, Craft Queen is amazing with what she comes up with. Then you've got Delaney, who's brilliant with her, her vegetarian cooking ideas, are amazing. Joy does wonderful things on the Moo threads. We've got Judy doing the um, $5 shopping challenge. All these things are really, 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 really inspiring. But better than that, they're really useful. It's information that you can go bang, go off and use it straight away and you will get something out of it. So if you don't look at any other part of the website, go to the forum and join the conversations. Don't just read it. You're welcome to read it, but please join because they're a really lovely bunch of people in there and they will help you till the cows come home they are so giving it's just amazing and what else was there oh yeah for the next couple of months sorry to spring this on you but for the next couple of months we're going to be rearranging things in the member center <laughs> sorry you're probably just getting used to it the way it is 
but we think we've found a better way to organise stuff so it's easier to find, easier to use. So probably over the next week and a half, you'll start to see changes. Um, so if you go one day and it's normal and come back the next day and it's all different, don't panic. Everything, everything will still be there and I'll try and keep as much of the old site going as I add in the new stuff, just so that you've got time to transition. But hopefully the new way will be so much better for you, better for me, better for visitors. We'll see how, we can only try it anyway and see what happens because I've got so much stuff that still has to be uploaded that I was kind of hoping that I'd have four employees at the end of this week with everyone working from home. They could, in their spare time, work for mum. I already do. Yeah, I know you do, darling. So, and I'd get all this stuff done because there's recipes and... Oh, yeah. Not quite. There's but reason, though. Yeah, they have fluffed up. Beautiful. They nice. look really good and they smell nice too, folks. So there you go. So those, that's what's happening here at the moment, apart from the usual comedy capers in the family. It'll be interesting to see next week when I've got three home during the day again. It's been a long time since we had three home during the day and it's not been a public holiday or something. Wayne has to keep working because apparently he's an, he is an essential service, so he'll be out there every day with his hand sanitizer and his guest mask and his hazmat suit. And, no, not really, but he'll be out there every day anyway doing what he has to do. And I'll, I'll still be here. I had someone ring me, actually ring me this morning and ask if we were going to close for the duration of the crisis. And I, I don't think so. I, no, there's no need for, for us to close because we're actually not in touch with any of you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to say, no, we will keep going. We will plot on and um, do what we have to do. That's what I was going to say. We are trying to work out a way. We had been thinking about having get-togethers um, in different areas. And then, of course, we can't. So I'm trying to work out a way where we can all get together online, um, like um, a bit like a morning tea. We can all just sit down with our cuppa and our computer or our tablet or our phone or whatever and get into the one, um, like they used to be called chat rooms. I don't know what they call them now, if they still call them chat rooms. And we can all just talk, just talk like friends so that we no set, um, no set schedule or anything it'll just be at 10 o'clock i'll be there with my cup of tea join me sort of thing so i'm trying to figure out the way to do that that will be the least bother for you because some of them require some of them i've looked at have been limited to 10 people well that's not going to work and if it's bigger than 100 people then you've got to do this and register and, and that's not going to work because i don't want it to be complicated so if I can do that, we'll be having a few a few morning teas and catch-ups over a cuppa, I think, for a little while just to boost each other. I've been sending um, one of the groups I'm in. I found some um, some hilarious, some absolutely hilarious. I didn't think they were funny. Maureen thought they were funny, didn't you, Maureen? Um, some hilarious memes about different things that are going on. Not and a funny situation, Mum. Sweetheart, if you can't make light of it, you're just going to crawl into a corner, suck your thumb and turn into a blithering idiot. There is absolutely no need to do that. You can yes, say this, that when we run out of toilet paper? This, <laughs> this is a serious situation and I'm not making light of, of the crisis as it is at the moment. I'm not making light of the emergency and I'm not making light of the situation that so many people are finding themselves in because it is serious and it is frightening and it is worrying. But it's okay to be frightened. It's not okay to worry because worrying is going to freeze you 
you're not going to be able to do anything. So sit down with a pen and a piece of paper or your notepad or whatever and make a list. Make a list of the bills you've got to pay. Make a list of the food in your cupboard. Make a list of the meals you can make with those, those foods. Make a list of your craft supplies and then what you can make with those craft supplies. Make a list of the games you have that can keep the kids amused. Make those lists. But once you've done that, you'll be back in control and you'll be able to move forward. But worrying is just going to make you sick and give you a headache and you will end up in the corner sucking your thumb like a blithering idiot and it won't get you anywhere. So don't worry. And it is okay to be frightened. Everybody's frightened because this is unknown. There's no one in the world that's gone through this before. So this is unknown to everybody. So it's okay to be a little bit scared. But just remember, there are things you can do to stay in control. So make your plans and work those plans. I... I It will take take commitment and it's going to be a lifestyle change for everybody. It's already a lifestyle change for me and I'm pretty much a homebody anyway. So it's, it's going to be a big lifestyle change for us, but we can do this. We can get through this. It's only a hiccup. It's not forever. In the grand scheme of our, you know, three score years and 10 or 20 or 30 or however long we live, this isn't a, you know, this isn't a long time. While it's happening, it might seem like it's going to never end, but it will end. So just get on with that. Can you check the scrolls, please? Can I check the scrolls, please? I'm checking the scrolls. See, you needed to put that extra one in there. I think they might be done. I think so, too. Because then you could just cut it like a cake and break all the rules. <laughs> You're a rule breaker. My daughter, the rule breaker. Okay, if I get these down here, we can scroll up here and show. That's a massive scroll. Show um, everyone what they're like. That's a cooked. I think so. There's one way to find out. Oh, yes. Perfect. Mm. Lovely. Very hot. <laughs> really nice little scroll. So there you go. We've got plain scones, hot cross scones, <laughs> scrolls. Spice scones. Spice scones and scrolls. All done in the pie maker. Oh, that one's too big. It's going to take a while. Mm. Actually, great thing. So I'll pop these in here, give them a little brush where I put the brush. Had it. Over here. Get the brush with some water. Milk is what I meant. And in we go. Here we go. I lined them with baking paper so they wouldn't stick. But also how um, to lift them out because it's easier to lift them out. The first time we made the quiche, we didn't put the baking paper in, did we? No, it came out all right, though. It, it, it cooked beautifully. It was just a bit of a shuffle because I don't have a big enough spatula to lift the whole thing out. So baking paper, lift the baking paper, it works really well. Oh, there you go. They didn't even take 20 minutes to cook. Okay. So, folks, there you go. We've got, let's see. If I could do this without dropping, it would be a miracle. Yep. Good. Scrolls, plain scones, fruit scones. Hot scone buns. Hot scone buns, is that what they're called? Yeah, because there's no crops because there's no cross, okay. All made in the pie maker. The basic scone recipe is really simple. Three cups of Hannah's laughing over there. And I don't Rosemary know. said, did you have to mention cake? 
Cache is good. Cache is very good when you like cache. Do you know, cache is one of those meals that is great for scraps. You know, you just use up, you've got the three shriveled mushrooms left and the half a tomato and one tiny onion and a little bit of zucchini and you just grate it all up and put it in the quiche. And if you've got some leftover ham or bacon or chicken or whatever, put that in too, make up your custard, pour it over, sprinkle some cheese on top and it's done. It's a really good scrap, make turn the scraps into something delicious type meal. Yeah. And... It's one of those good, hot or cold. Or so, even lukewarm. Or even lukewarm, yeah. So quiche is a good meal. We like quiche. And it's actually really quite easy to make. Can I have a quick breakfast, lunch or dinner? Yes, you can have a breakfast, lunch or dinner. Oh, anything else like that about quiche? You can have quiche with pastry and quiche without pastry. You can have big quiches. You can do individual quiches. Yes. And then you can do snack quiches. Yes, you can. You can do little mini ones for parties. I'm done. Okay. All right. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed the um, make do in the kitchen and let's make scones along with the mess I've made and everything else. That's how I am, folks. Yeah. It's really happening. This is live. So thank you for joining me. I shall see you on Tuesday night. Have a lovely weekend. Stay safe. Stay indoors. Remember your social distancing. And if you get bored, plant a veggie garden. Oh, reject shop for seeds. There you go. Well, you're not supposed to be shopping, but anyway. I if like you need cake. seeds, reject shop. Okay, I shall see you on Tuesday night. Thank you all again, and I will try and get these recipes into the recipe file tomorrow for you. All right. Good night. Find my do like you upset. Okay. Night. Hey, it's better.